I'm Clint, and welcome to Swatches live stream number 20. Now, the weekly art challenge is why most people come for the live stream. Uh, if we do have time left over, then we will be doing some portfolio reviews, maybe some paint overs, maybe of some of the entries as well. We'll just see how that goes. All right, Aaron Howard, you are up first. Uh, if you are new to the stream, you've not seen me do this before. These are all the entries from the various people. And everyone made a character design slash um, scene based on not that. <laughs> that was where I had this one open. Based on this outline. We came up with a random character. I just rolled some dice. So it had to be a paladin with an eye patch who was a dragonborn with a dragon motif, some sort of design on their costume or person, and it could be male, female, or androgynous. Uh, dragonborn, I did say, could be fairly open. It could be a human that could turn into a dragon, or it could be a humanoid dragon, uh, somewhere in that. And it could also be pretty much any time frame. You could do your classic mytho mythological or fantasy to anywhere to like a science fiction futuristic. All right, so that is what everyone was going off of. And a lot of people this week did not finish their pieces. Uh, intentionally, specifically told me didn't have time to finish, got it started, but wanted to submit anyway. And I encourage that. I encourage that. Sometimes schedules get out of our hands. But what I want to see is people who are just taking a little time out of the week to keep their skills up. All right, maybe you don't finish a whole piece. That's fine. A week is not very long. But what's important is just keeping that habit going where you're consistently, every week, you're drawing something. All right, that just keeps the rust from building up, you know, and it just keeps you going. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, I like the uh, dragon head here going on. It looks like you're coming up with some sort of, I don't know, is this like a crown or horns? Uh, it's unfinished. But either way, I think it's kind of cool because you don't usually see you know, like an elaborate set of horns. If it was almost crown-like, that's a pretty cool idea. I'm going for something very dramatic here. Um, but again, not very finished, so I can't go you know, too much more into that. Uh, I would say that this staff, you probably need to adjust that. It, it's very uh, quite small compared to the size of the character. Uh, Clint, what was the deadline for this challenge? Uh, that would be today by 5 p.m. I think somebody sent it in just like a couple minutes after, and I did get that one. But it's got to be an hour or two before the next live stream. Uh, where did my thing go? Here we go. Uh, swatches. Uh, should we... It says 10.15. Should we make it two weeks with the first week spent on studies for it? It could be. I would be open to doing a... Two week challenge, no prizes given for the first one, but just talking about some of the sketches and then moving on to the second week. I like that suggestion. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, you say that's a banner. Ah, uh, man, I, you know, in that case, I'd probably just go the other way. I'd probably turn it into some fancy, cool set of horns. That's a little more different, unique. Okay, next up, Alessandra Gava, Dragonborn. Alessandra, uh, when I opened this, I immediately knew this is one of your stronger pieces. Uh, particularly nice. Uh, she's got a lot of character to her, and you did a good job. Yeah. So, it has some issues, but on the whole, it's good. I get the feeling like this character is, I don't know, like a, an ice dragon, like an ice dragonborn, where she's probably just immune to the cold. Uh, that's the impression I'm getting. Now, one thing to watch on this, which is a common mistake, um, everybody, I say this because I've done it, uh, um, everybody gets this wrong at some point, the tilt of the head, the horns need to follow that. So, this is the angle, let's pull in even tighter, uh, the angle of the head is like this, but the horns are at a slightly different angle, and that, in order to follow the same angle of the head, that horn would need to be down here, or this one would need to be up there. So make sure that you're watching that. And also, just, if this is coming that way, this would actually be coming like this. They're, they would be not mirroring themselves this way. 
they only mirror themselves like that if you're seeing it from the front. But if you're seeing it from the side, they are almost have the exact same shape. So keep that in mind. And if it doesn't uh, work, you can't figure that out, just get like a wire hanger and, and bend it around your head and, and take some pictures just to see how the three-dimensional curve works. Otherwise, the combination of the dark metal with the light fur and this long blade, really cool. Uh, this is a little odd. I like her having a tail, but having the tail always running right at the end of that fabric uh, makes it a little confusing. So I would suggest changing that up. You can just have the fabric flow over part of the tail and maybe even blow off the page. And then it comes back here to where now the tail is hanging out from underneath the fabric. And so you cross one over the other in one spot and then vice versa somewhere else. So they both get to change and you get to see that they're separate. Yep. Ellen, you, uh, you were saying that this is your first entry, I believe, wasn't it? Okay, we've got this one. Got a little pet dragon, and they've got a little dragon wing as part of their eye patch. Oh, yeah, that was something else with Alessandra. You didn't have an eye patch, did you? No. Okay, they were supposed to have an eye patch, so I've got to give it a little knock on that. Uh, pretty good, but uh, unfinished. You know, not, not real uh, finished as far as, I mean, even the background. I'm not even sure that you needed a background to go along with it. It'd probably be better just to not even bother with the background if you're not going to be able to do a lot and just put more time into the character. Uh, the next thing I would be really looking at is this shape. It's very big and there's just nothing to it. So maybe adding in some patterns, mimicking some of the same uh, shapes and colors onto that. And you have this sort of just very realistic head here and this wing but there's nothing else about it that really plays off of that. So, you know, let's continue that. Maybe another one on that shoulder, some designs here. And then maybe something else with his features. Uh, maybe even horns would be helpful. Uh, Clint, do you have a Twitter? No, I don't actually have a Twitter um, at this point. Bjorn. Dragonborn, all right. Uh, another one. Nice piece. This is one of the better pieces I've seen you do. I, I particularly like this one. And the style is a little different in that it is sort of cartoony. You've got this um, a cell shaded sort of approach, but yet some of it's a little more, you know, painterly. Uh, on the whole, I think this is a pretty strong character. Um, it, it's very cohesive, I'll say it that way. So. What would I adjust? I feel like I know that she's supposed to be powerful, but like this arm is almost too big to be feminine. Like she's massively thick, you know, in the wrist and stuff. So if you want to have her a bigger hand like this, I'd say what you want to do is make it more claw like and then less beefy. So she can still have long fingers but they're going to be a little more claw-like so that the end of them is more like a claw where you know it gets thick right here and then the claw comes out of it and so her hands are a bit more that way or maybe just that arm is that way and then the other side is more human you could have that one uh that sort of dichotomy going on in her anatomy uh, changing this angle on that one a little bit would probably help or because if it's like this, then we should see some of it back here behind that. But we don't. So that means that this other one needs to be going back at a slightly different angle. And I, I think those would separate before there. They'd be separating over here. So just a little perspective thing going on. Um, again, this is another place where you might want to add just a little decoration or embroidery. Something along the edge would be helpful. But on the whole, good submission. Kronos. There we go. Oh, we got a couple of these. And this was a good idea as far as character design. Uh, something that would be very important to do for a client 
if you were doing this for a proper game or movie, to show the various versions of the characters, so the normal unarmored and the armored version. Francel says, wow, at least I saw this live for the first time. Amazing. Greetings here from the Philippines. Hey, Francel, welcome from the Philippines. Good to have you. So uh, here we've got this guy, uh, the dragon version and the human version. I guess he can switch back and forth and he would just take his armor off if he uh, goes dragon form. And this, I've got to say, is a very successful way to bridge between the semi-dragon, semi-human. Where he's got one wing, he's got horns, his eyes change a different color. And then he's got like this black kind of scaly stuff that just goes over one arm and the tail. And those are enough to give you that while remaining still very human. As far as the shapes... Pay attention to his shape language here because it's very effective. Look at this shape, this very acute point, spike shape. He uses it on that, uses it again here, uses it here, he uses it all over the armor. He uses a lot of those acute spike angles and that gives it a very cohesive look. It makes him look more dangerous. Where he doesn't do is go in and add circles, right? Why? Because that wouldn't meet the shape language. I talk about shape language in my ebook on character design, and that goes right along with it. So he's following that. And it's well rendered, too. Nice and clean. Going for Dag. We've got a the dragon version of the Dragonborn. And going with something as about as complicated as you can do. Chromy armor and <laughs> reflective gold. Wow. Uh, let me take a look, uh, look at the chat here. Uh, Painting two versions of the same character are clever. Yeah, it is clever. Uh, it's time consuming, but if you can do it, it's nice. Um, Franklin says, I sent mine in about three hours ago, but I don't see it on the folder since in alphabetical order I might have done something. Uh, depends. Did you save it with your name? Or some of them are saved under people's um, uh, handles. You know, like their their YouTube handle. Okay, so they get out of sync like that. Uh, Sanka asks, uh, how long will we be live, Clint? I should be sleeping, but if you're going to be live for at least three to five hours, I'll be staying. No, I'm not going to be streaming that live uh, long. I'll be streaming maximum two hours because I still have to get to the gym tonight. And I want to take off before then. Yeah, so, uh, it depends how the... Okay, that's actually a good reminder, Franklin. Is if you can name your file your name. So if, you know, your name is Franklin, then put Franklin. And then you maybe you say something like Dragonborn character. That's better because some sites, they don't. Uh, uh, some sites, when I pull it out, they don't name theirs like that. And I have to manually go in and retype names for about half of the entries. And it's just time consuming because I have to reference back to who you are and pull up your link and look at your profile page and retype it. So try to name your file with your name followed by whatever you want to you know, remember it by. Okay, so something on here is let's watch the posture. I think this is the gist of the posture. posture and I get what's happening. He's got his foot up there. He's got his arm on his leg but get in that pose or have a friend or a family member get in that pose take a picture of it look how the body poses what's likely going to happen is that they're going to put this elbow on that leg right up by the knee that means that this hip is going to be high because they got the leg going up on that side uh, then this shoulder is going to be low because they're leaning that shoulder down to rest the elbow on that leg but he kind of got that going on both sides where he's leaning on this side but he's got that leg up so i really suggest taking a look at the pose start from that again and then work back up to the more details i feel like maybe you push through the initial stage a little too fast uh also consider beefing the neck up when you give extra size to the head by making it dragon-like like this then it can make the neck seem really little 
So you have to adjust that human proportion a little bit to offset the size of the head. Franklin says, I think I've named mine uh, Swatches Challenge or something like that. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. I, I never mentioned it before. This is the first time. I just it occurred to me that I spent like half an hour downloading and renaming stuff. So, like, yeah, we'll just mention it. Dan Peck. Uh, this, he said, was his first entry and an excellent entry. Thanks for uh, joining in on the challenge. Uh, Squirrel says, uh, how do I know if mine is in the folder? Title, Initiation of the Dragonborn. Uh, I remember seeing your name. You should be in here. Yeah. If we get to the end and it's not in there, then I made a mistake. <laughs> uh, so we've got a nice line drawing going on. And we've got a very faint dragon here in the background. So he is, I don't know, summoning the dragon or calling it to to be challenged? I don't know. I don't know if it's a magic or he's just hiding in the back. Uh, I like this idea. He did say that he used the dragon head from like a clip art. Uh, he was limited on time. So I'll say that I like the shield design. I like the dragon looping around itself. Back to that. That's pretty cool. You got the classic stance. That's fine. Uh, what I will say is that this Let's change that up a little bit. Uh, lots and lots of scales just become very busy. So what we want to do is adjust that a little bit so that it's a little more intentional. Like maybe this front piece is the biggest. And then we have some side pieces going behind it. And that's usually what you want. You want to vary the size of them. It's so like the biggest piece may be over where the biggest muscle would be. Uh, then you have smaller pieces going in behind that. And you probably want to also increase shoulders, and give more prominent piece to the shoulders in order to make him seem uh, more powerful. What is a good website for hosting these images? I'm using Google Photo right now. Uh, yeah, I would suggest ArtStation. ArtStation.com, it's free, it's professional. And it's easy to get access to uh, from anywhere. It's easy to pull images off of. Oh, I can just double click. David sent in this one. This is more what you would see for 3D modeling or if you were going to make a, a, a figurine, you know, like a toy or something. This is what you would call a turnaround where you get the front, side, and back in a orthogonal view. Uh, the being 100, you know, percent view there's no perspective or, or lighting change to it and this is another one that has a very consistent theme to it it's a very well created character it's a very consistent character uses a lot of the same shapes you can see this uh designs going on on these are very nice it gives a slight um uh, extra read to it right you can pause and actually look at some of the designs going on and he's got this. This is different, right? Um, I'm not sure. He's like he's got the patch is part of the. I guess it's a hat. It doesn't really look like a helmet. And the dragon shape for the face is. Personally, I like it. It's like more squarish. It's a little more snub. It's not the long sinewy sort of dragon face. And you can see this is more what I was talking about earlier, which is he's broadened that neck out, right? So it's doing that. And it really helps support the character nicely. Now, I don't have that much to say about this other than uh, you might want to adjust this pose just from the side. You still can throw his chest out and allow this curve to happen. You, you get an S curve from the side, even when you're standing uh, still. And you can think of it like the back of the thigh is straight and it curves on the front. Uh, then the front of the shin is straight and it curves on the calf. So it, it goes backwards, right? It goes that way on one side and then goes the other way on the other one. And it makes that nice S. So that's a, a small thing about that. And uh, I would say... Almost like if you toned this green down a little bit, it would help him stand out. Because right now, his armor overrides the character because it is bigger, bolder than he is. And you really want people to connect 
to him. So if you tone that down just a little bit and let his greens and his oranges stand out, and probably just make it pop a little bit more from the character aspect. All right, moving on. Dimit Soru. Sorry if I butchered that. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, this is cool. Asian style. A dragonborn summoning a dragon spirit. Particularly like that. Uh, my favorite thing of this image is probably this dragon head itself. It's a fun design. It has a lot of form to it. Look at this. See these nice big shapes? You can just feel the volumes of these shapes. You can feel the volume of that face. And the perspective is nice on it. These cool Asian style whiskers. Uh, so yeah, that's excellent. This I feel like is almost subservient to uh, that part, but that's fine. Uh, I would suggest taking a look at some of the Asian armor like when you put your arm up like that, it's probably going to make that shoulder plate set up a lot higher. And the pose, yeah, just like that arm, that's the gist of the arm. So if you're going to move forward with this, I'm going to call you out on, okay, let's just revise the pose a little bit. I don't think we have enough distance in the torso. Like the arm compared to the torso, the the arm is going to go down to like past the knee if he stands up. So let's check the proportions a little bit and then adapt the design that you have along with a couple of more uh, references and nail that a bit more. All Night Design says, uh, in ArtStation, there is a level too high for my work. I feel a little coward by that. Okay, yeah, ArtStation, ArtStation uses an algorithm to filter the best highest quality work to the main page well don't go there for that don't go there because you're trying to get your stuff on the main page you just go there because you need somewhere to host your images and they do and it's a good interface so don't be afraid about that or if you just go there because there's a lot of cool inspiration there's a lot of great stuff to learn by looking at that stuff and maybe that can be one of your goals is try to get on the main page yeah, so don't it's not about competing with the people there it's about just needing a place uh online to host your your gallery and it's a respected place and if you are there for several years and you end up getting some professional work and you you know somebody says hey where can i go see your portfolio you don't want to say oh i've got a google photos album i can send you a link no you can say oh i've got art station gallery and be like okay cool i know that so, Eva, what you got? All right, Eva's got a Dragonborn, another winter version. And going with a lot of the same shapes here, very spiky. I think this is a good first pass. But we've got some, like, anatomy pose things going on. Little character design stuff going on, too. Okay, number one, let's check the pose. He looks like he's really laying back a lot. And I have a feeling that he would probably be leaning forwards more. And he may even be leaning forwards, resting that elbow on the knee, and then letting the uh, shoulder support the sword from that. So he's more relaxed. He's letting the, the knee carry the weight of the sword, essentially. And that would be a little more, uh, I guess, lifelike. And that would, you know, help. Uh, maybe he's got that thumb just sort of looped in the belt. So he's really cool, right? He's he's chilling. All right. Aside from that, what else are we going to talk about? Uh, okay. If this was like an Arctic dude, I would expect to see more Arctic colors. And then if you want a pop of red, you just want a pop of red. And you could throw that red on the sword and then on a piece of the armor or on some designs of the armor but otherwise we probably want to keep it a lot cooler in tone uh, next take a look at some armor see how it works around here because that mantle shape like i don't think you can turn your head in that so take a look at some other armor see how they design it look up some tutorials on armor design and pick up a cues from that and then move forward so I think it's cool as far as a human has like dragon feet and he's from the north and he's got a big sword 
and he's kind of hidden so that's all cool but now let's go get some good inspiration some um, points of realism add that in Esquel Mercado all right uh, they did say that they were more interested in telling a little scene story rather than uh, character design. So they said, oh, I just wanted to go with that. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, da, da, da. Just looking. Uh... <laughs> You're watching the live stream on 144. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I've had a sad internet myself before. Uh, so, we've got these two dragonborns who have killed a really big dragon and or, or have taken it down. And uh, then it is the young one's job to then actually kill the dragon. Uh, okay, that's, that's neat. I would say that if you want to move forwards with this image, let's get in closer. Okay? And this works fine as far as getting the gist across and serves as the direction that you need to go. But if we move the camera to right here and we were about six feet off the ground and we we're looking that way, we'd be a lot more dramatic because all of a sudden we'd have the big dragon head right here in the scene and the neck would be looping around and those two would be standing there towards the center and he's going to be handing him the sword to chop the head. And the wing's going to be folding over here. And it puts us right down in the middle of it. It makes it more real. All right. Fleetus Designs. Uh, do Art Station require a full name? Not too keen on using that. Oh, you can give them whatever name you want. There's quite a few people that go by pseudonyms. All right. Fleetus. Um, that's pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Um, the values are probably just a little too grayish. Like, I I have to pay attention to some of this to make out what's going on between, like, cloth and, and stuff. I imagine if you gave it more time, you'd work that all out. But on the whole, I like it. Well, we've got a dragonborn that actually has dragon wings. And he's got... I'm not sure what this is. Like, you've got this little stuff... Maybe if you added color, it'd make more sense. I don't know if that's like vines and that would be green or if that's some sort of like red veiny stuff. So until that's clarified, I don't know that it's really adding. It's more confusing the image until that happens. But uh, I like it. And the layers here are good. It's a layer of armor, a layer of armor. And you've got the tabard thing. You've got the design on the tabard. You've got... Uh, believable sets of armor here. Uh, so, yeah, it's, and the dynamic here is also good as far as just the centering. It's just the classic thing. I would say that you probably want to set him to the left, like a little bit, just move him over a little bit. You generally want to leave slightly more room on the side that the character is facing than uh, their back, just to give that breathing room as i would say uh luke says first time catching you live thanks for the opportunity for live critiques i'll be joining the challenge soon awesome well thanks for joining luke and okay so where would you go from there yeah i would need more clarity on that uh, i assume this is a shield but the shield doesn't seem like it there's any way it's being held there so i'd either say drop the shield or it needs to be moved there in front of him where we can actually tell that it's like or is this it? Is this where it's looping around? Okay, so it just needs to be clarified. Like, maybe that's the thing on the shield. But it doesn't feel like you would be holding it at the right angle. Because his arm's in front of him. And that means that the, the thing would need to be right next to the arm. So, okay. Let's clarify that. And then, you know, go in with colors and stuff. Uh, Franco, you were just saying that you were joining in from Philippines. Yeah. So, uh, Francis Francis got a nice piece going on here. Another two versions of the character. Uh, not so much two versions, but uh, one with the helmet and the shield and one without, as you can tell. Uh, what do I like about this? There's a lot of good things going on here. It's very clean, for a start. 
I'm not wondering about what anything is. All right, so that is excellent. Number two, he does keep a nice limited palette. He knows what his palette is. It's basically cool grays in light and dark tones, some gold, and some reds. And that's it. And his orange hair and his oranger-ish skin allow his face to stand out because it's against that color scheme. Uh, he also keeps a lot of the same shapes. It's sort of the... Um, Octong, uh, like a pentagon angle, whatever that angle would be, the tooth angle, along with a more pointed spike. And everything sort of fits along that. Uh, the sword has these little runes on it. So there's some little details that are nice. He's got the edging, the thickness of these, which is something a lot of people don't add in. It's a nice little addition there. Again, like the thickness on the leather, that is a good addition. Uh, you say quite Dragon Age-ish. Yeah, it does. Uh, it has similar design, which is a, a compliment. Uh, so going with this, what, you know, something that I can suggest. Uh, I feel like this is a little underutilized. Now, I would agree that this is a big area that you don't necessarily need to bring a lot of attention to. But if you already established that you have runes, then have some of the runes going down the middle of it or along these. And maybe they are even silver because you don't want to necessarily uh, draw too much attention. So if you just had like embossed or uh, carved runes into that, that would be a little addition that you could go for. Uh, Three-dimensionally, this feels a little off for me. If this leg is turned that much to us, then there's a good amount of the leg on the inside that's not being covered by it. But this one is curved almost all the way to the inside of the leg. And if it was equal on that side to this side, it should be more over here. So this one almost lines up with the side of that uh, knee thing. And then that knee thing's over here on this one. So we'll just check that to make sure the roundness around there is a little more accurate but otherwise uh really good and i do like the slightly lighter on the top grading uh graduating to uh the bottom yep. gilherm gilherm okay we've got a dragon version of the dragon born and got, gave us an entire scene to go with now this is a tricky situation having a really warm light with a green skin tone uh, that's difficult, and it actually fits in pretty good, but yeah, not easy. Uh, this is another one where, like, the idea is there, but we need to find a way to fuse the human with the dragon a little more effectively. Basically, if we just have a human with some spikes on his head, but if we could adjust it so that his face was slightly more proportional to a dragon find find a proportion that's somewhere in between the two of them and we want to merge that this would also be a place where you'd probably want to beef the character up a little bit more he doesn't seem very threatening he doesn't seem very powerful right now even if you want to keep it to being like a youth and he's not a you know a brawny massive barbarian sort of you still probably want him to be a little bit more. So let's thicken the neck up. Maybe give him a little more biceps. Uh, his waist is very thin. So maybe beefing that up a little bit. So yeah. We want to just go along with that. Look, Make sure you look at some references. Maybe you see what some of these other guys are doing. As far as how do you find a middle ground for human and dragon faces. Green in the light came out. Uh, brownish or even black in the dust. It's going to the end I guess. All right. Oh, oh I, okay. I need to go faster. All right. I need to go faster. Uh, Gunner said that his computer died or something like that. So we had to do this traditionally. So this is a traditional painting. And that he photographed it with his phone. So the, the quality isn't <laughs> as high as it could be as far as just image quality. So... Uh, I appreciate the physical, traditional painting. Uh, that seriously has taken some time and talent. So 
major props for that. And uh, this is another way he feels a little, I want to say a little, a little weak with that. Just kind of, it's like kind of a weak way to hold an axe. Uh, if I, I would think maybe a little more, a little more like this, you know, you're making a big fist and then making this guy even more threatening we could you know double the size of that axe right it doesn't necessarily have to be realistic but dude props on uh the physical painting yeah traditional um yeah it, it wouldn't even be too hard maybe come in here and add like some little chips and uh scratches and stuff to a shield show that he's been seeing some uh warfare yeah Igor Bondar, uh, a little different, not the full character. We went more with a character piece uh, where it's uh, head and shoulders, feature piece of it. Uh, I like the lighting. This is a nice way to do the lighting. Uh, you can note that he has the light just going across that part of the face, and then it has shadow here. However, he allows the light in the background to go behind the shadow part, so it stands out. That's a clever way to do it. This also just has a very instant paladin read. Uh, in a good combination of being a paladin and a uh, dragonborn. Which, those two don't always go together real easy. This was clever. I've not seen this done before. Uh, I get the feeling that it's like he can go to his dragon version. And then it's like his mouth is used to like changing shapes so much that it's all it's always kind of torn from his transition from one to the other and it's like his his you know lips and skin just split when when the dragon version comes out maybe i'm totally wrong but that's kind of what i read into it it's also well rendered and it's nice and clean uh you don't have a lot of lost edges and stuff in places where you don't need them so, yeah, well done. Uh, I would say we might want just a little color down here. Um, yeah, like that blue. We've got this great blue going on. I splash some of that blue down in here somewhere. And that would be good. Digging the tr translucent eye patch. Yeah, the other eye underneath there is glowing as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, and we're also getting a little grayed out. So we've got we've got some gray going on over top of these really warm tones and I'm going to back off of that and say maybe we transition to a move from that color to a di slightly different color rather than just putting gray on top and it's kind of dulling them down but overall beautiful piece. I'm a I'm gonna, okay, you're going at this one very different. So we've got like this massive flame gun thing uh, with this tall helmet. Um, I Frankly, I can't make out some of this, but I like it. I like it. It's different. Um, you've got these tall armor pieces that like go up the thigh, and then it's like chainmail and tabard. Uh Frankly, I think that's a pretty cool idea. Uh, the the tall leg armor, just visual wise, uh, it has sort of a Final Fantasy thing going on. Just for that part, the helmet not so much. Uh, I honestly would need to see a bit more to see uh, to understand kind of what's going on. I, is this an eye? Is like the fire coming out of one of the eyes, and it and it tore open the helmet. And then they like he like channels it into his gun sword thing. Yeah, I'm just uh, the lighting is cool. You've got this stark shadow going back there. I like that. You've got the rest of this sort of out of focus keeps him sharp. Yeah, it's one that I want to see you keep working on. I want to see how you flesh out some of this. So thank you, thank you for the entry. Uh, nice entry, Jay Welch. I did, in fact, download your image this week. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, I keep somehow forgetting to uh, add hers or it gets added to the wrong folder or whatever. 
So the white, good idea. And keeping the limited colors, the scarlet, the white, and just this dull green for whatever forest area she's in. That's nice. It works together. Uh, I would suggest darkening the background a little bit so that white does stand out better if you're going to develop the entire scene more. And you're going with like feathers. That's kind of cool. I would put in one, one horn into the feathers. I would keep the feathers because that's sort of unique and that, that's unusual. But let's add one horn in there and the body seems like this. There's no distinction here on the leg as far as like thigh to knee to shin to calf to ankle. So let's just go find some reference for that and give me some definition in there. And we want to over, we want to exaggerate the form a little bit. Uh, if she is going to be, uh, I'm guessing female because of the, the wrapping, but I'm not getting much else female from it. So we could really emphasize like bigger hips, bigger bust, thinner waist, uh, slightly thinner neck, or allow it to go wide here and thinner up at the top. So we can really give her less of a just standard human than emphasize that and i could see her being this really cool sort of beautiful almost elegant dragonborn she's like all white with these these red tips on her feathers and she's maybe got more of a sinewy beautiful face and i think that would go along with the character really well okay james All right, skipping the background, just doing the basic little ground underneath that, and that's fine. You see, a lot of these are just fine without the backgrounds. Uh, always consider backgrounds just bonus. Make sure you nail the character as good as you can, and if you have time, toss background in there. But going on the background uh, is not going to save or improve the image if the character design is bad. I think a tail would help with the body shape as well. Yeah, that is an excellent suggestion. Especially if you're going to go with more of a elegant shape, the uh, tail would be nice. Take a look at some of the the posing and the and the body language of like the Navi from uh, the movie Avatar. Uh, you probably want uh, she's like super slim. You might want to make her a little more busty and a little more in the hips than like what uh whatever her name is natiri from the movie but yeah that, that is a cool direction you could go with it i like this guy uh he's got the immediate shape i uh, he's thick he's big and uh he already feels like he's been in battle and he's got like the golden patch here and the glowing eye there okay i dig that uh, so, I would suggest backing off of the textures a little bit. This is a little over-textured. Uh, let's do more with actual painting and suggest wear and tear without speckles. All right, And I get that you can use speckles on some things, but it's like the same speckle everywhere. And that just sort of takes away from it um, this is maybe getting a little thick around the feet so take a look at establishing some joints a look at the way the back of a like a lizard's leg goes um, or some other large reptile or maybe a clawed foot this is almost more like a elephant foot it's like really thick and then you've got of a little foot thing going on on the front. Uh, it would probably be better if it was more longer, uh, more like a clawed foot. And for the armor, I don't know that these... Like, this shape is not really doing a lot for me. 
I almost feel like you could take off these uh, thigh pieces, just let him have a long chainmail skirt, and then give him like some belts and maybe an extra axe or something, just to give some visual information there. And that way you keep him like really broad and beefy up on the top, and then he gets a little slimmer down at the bottom, and he doesn't use those. Luke says, uh, would it be possible to announce the next challenge at the beginning so we can sketch while we watch? Um, yeah, we can do that next week. Uh, I won't do it right now. I'll go ahead and finish these and then we'll do it. Or, okay, well, I'll take it from the chat. Uh, do you guys want me to go ahead and pause here and then go and do the next challenge and assign it? It's up to you. If you want to do that, we'll do that. I've got a good idea, a great idea, and an arrow. And then that's it. So three people of a hundred thinks it's excellent. And that's nowhere near majority. <laughs> All right, this is Jeffrey Parent, Dragonborn. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I definitely have more people saying... Okay, uh, it's sort of split. We've got like... We're only halfway. All right, I'm going faster. Okay, guys. It Seriously, going forwards, I might end up just picking like the top five or ten for next week and talking through those. I don't know that I can keep going through every single entry because we're getting like 40 entries. And even to spend two minutes on each one of them is a solid hour and a half. And that's if I'm trying to clip through fast. Okay, uh, this is consistent. Um, full character, I like that. I don't think you actually need gold. The gold with this or the the gold needs to be duller. This red is really powerful and it pops. And that's fine, you can do that, but the gold is almost as powerful. So let's tone it down, make it maybe more like a bronze so it doesn't compete quite as much. And let's also add some value changes in this so that these aren't all basically the same value. It's like all the white and silver and armor pieces are like the same. And so maybe the armor pieces are darker or the, uh, the male uh, scale pieces are darker. Or definitely these could be colored or they could be darker, the belts. So we're looking at some value changes there in order to adjust that. And let's, you can get the whole top of the body broad it out a little bit and then increase the size of the head some and drop it in behind that more. So he seems bulkier. His head's a little bit bigger, but it's, it's hidden behind that some. Yeah. Johannes. All right, this is a, a good start. I, I think this is another one they said that they did not get in as much as they wanted to. But Massive Dragon, they're teamed up. I like that idea. Dragons always have the oddest look from the front. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you probably looked up references. If you have not looked up references of Smaug from The Hobbit and seen what he looks like, make sure you go look up some references of him how some of those shapes work just to help pull out some extra forms and folds and seeing how the scales can form around the features um, because he is so big and he draws so much attention you need to make sure that you have plenty of uh, information and and believability there uh, I like this guy he's pretty cool this armor is does this armor honestly looks like porcelain rather than um, metal? And maybe that's what you're going for. And if you did, that's pretty cool. And I, I'm a fan of that. 
Uh, I would suggest adjusting. Right here, it looks like there is no opening. Like, there's no way to cinch this. And let's see this being multiple pieces. Like, maybe that's a piece, and then this is a piece. We saw some of the other ones that they, like, put a piece here in the front that sort of curves out. That's common. Or show a clip or, you know, a strap or something like that. Uh, also, making these bigger would also make him seem a little more masculine. Keep working with it. That's neat. Oh, uh, and adjust the neck. The neck going almost straight back doesn't really work. So well, let's maybe curve that a little bit more. Okay. George Silva. Uh, you will have to go... You will have to go through me first, says George. Okay, so this guy is protecting his kin. He's dragonborn, part dragon. They're part dragon. Uh, overall, a lot of this is really dark. So let's make sure that we're not losing too much uh, just because the image is super dark. And so, yeah, let's pop that up a little bit. In order to sell that this is an eye patch, we really do need to see like a strap going across there. Yeah, otherwise it's hard to tell. That and if I didn't know that was an eye patch, I'd be wondering what that is. So let's make sure we have that. I like his pose. I like the inclusion of the other characters. It immediately gets the connotation of what's going on with that. Uh, this on the shield is good. I like the flamey blade probably a more interesting shape to that wouldn't take much just aside from just a straight little v shape um you know give it a little curve or a spike or or something yeah uh looking up traditional like roman armor yeah that's fun keep going with that uh I mean, you can look up references for that that's that's fun and check on how you want to handle the lighting as far as the color scheme. I think you can bring a lot more color rather than uh, reaching into just a lot of blacks. Yeah. Kabaru. Hopefully I said that. Uh, sorry about the meaning of quality. I don't know. What if we do 30 second per a piece, then review the best ones? Yeah, that's why I'm trying to. It's just hard for me to look at a piece and think about it, work through it, say what I like, say what I don't like, and make suggestions in 30 seconds without ever seeing the piece before thinking about it. Um, yeah, okay, futuristic version, all right. It doesn't immediately read Centurion to me. I mean, uh, Paladin to me. So the other guy was a Centurion. Uh, so I would like to see some more of that coming in. That glove and arm, actually, I really am a fan of that. That's rendered real. And this is... That is odd. This is odd. He's like using a baby dragon as a... An eye patch and it's like pulled into his skin. I mean, I like it as far as it's just so strange. But I feel like if you're going to do that, this needs to be like horror. You might as well just run with it. Because there's, there's no way that's not going to go horror very quickly uh so maybe this is kind of like doom you know the game and this is some weird dark soldier from that has you know like these things growing out of him or uh I, i'm not sure but yeah we need to get a more consistent paladin look and then maybe running with the the dark sort of horror version you get know, really dark eyes and stuff yeah doom d-o-o-m not dune you know uh cat k um really nice rendered piece it's a uh, well executed it's like very finished and good pop to the lighting and the colors. Very limited palette with the pop of the orange. This has a, uh, a very uh, Jason Chan look to it. It seems like he's done a similar look. Uh, he'll do like a very limited grayish image with a pop of color from a straight view. Uh, maybe you looked at some of those. If you did, that you did well because it has a lot of the same looks. Uh, very strong piece. And... 
Uh, a couple of suggestions would be... Uh, let's see a little more blowing with those, maybe, because the hair looks like it's blowing a lot. That's not so much. And then again, let's change up some of the shapes of the pattern here. You can still keep the horizontal um, pattern on these. Maybe some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. Or what I would probably do is, once they get like two-thirds of the way down, then they inverse and start going the other direction down to a point. So it changes. Uh, and you can do it along this. Like the ones on the top curve up so it mimics the shape of the breast curve but the ones on the bottom curve down going down with the body uh yep so some some that sort of thing some small stuff going on there um she's very minimalistic i almost say a belt would be nice maybe not depends uh but this is really well rendered i don't really have any suggestions as far as the face and hair and stuff uh, Ken Oder. All right, big one. I like the idea of this being a particularly big character compared to a regular human. Now, the dragonborn nature of them makes them, like, you know, eight feet tall. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, the wings basically serving as kind of a cloak... And it walks along with them. Uh, that's an excellent idea. So, I think you know what's going well with this image. The armor design works together along with the wings. You've got this weird crawly thing going up. Okay, I buy that. Uh, we really need to beef up the neck and the arms. You've got this massive upper body and chest that does not match up with the size of this arm or this neck. So let's beef those up, and then we want to use some big gradients on the character, light to dark, color to, you know, desaturated color. So, like, it gets black towards the hands. It gets black towards the end of the wings. There's a pop of red glowing out from inside the chest. We need some places of accents. To draw your attention to different places. Okay. Chris. Hmm. <laughs> this is good. Bright sunlight army of dragonborn standing together. Uh, I'll give you credit for this one. They basically got copy and pasted. So those are all the same as this dude. Without an eye patch. Ah. <sighs> Pretty good shapes here. I would suggest, again, go look at some uh, some dragons, actual alligators, crocodiles, uh, lizards, that sort of thing, and see how that mouth shape works and see how teeth actually come up out of one side from the top or the bottom and three-dimensionally how the, the face has to fold around those, and that would be helpful. Uh, okay, got that. I feel like the head is maybe a little big for the body. And so, I, you know, pull that down just a little bit. And maybe set it slightly more forwards. Uh, it'll make them seem a little a little more powerful. Uh, because uh, this seems high. It seems like he's doing this. Right? So, we need to lower his shoulder or we need to raise this one up to be equal. I probably want to do both. You probably want to bring that one up a little bit and then bring that one down a little bit. And you could beef that one up too. Again, we're trying to make them look powerful, right? And we're going to make the shoulders our big point in order to do that. Leo. Right. Leo did not get to really finish the full image. But this is a really good start. Um, one of my favorite starts to an image. And... You've got a good combination of colors here with the the scarlet along with the gold and you've got them with the golden hair and just that little greenish aqua color offsetting it. So that works for me. Um, even if you wanted to get rid of the gold on these and put the aqua color, I think that would work as well. I, I think it needs more work. Uh, you could also consider adding like horns 
kind of coming off the back. So we'd continue the shape of this, but it'd be like horns coming off of where her shoulders would be or giving her wings. I could see this character having wings. Or maybe it's part of her armor or maybe it's part of her organically. But either way, that would work. So, yeah, let's just keep working with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the colors. Uh, I think you come up with something a little more creative for the eye patch. Just the regular eye patch. Yeah, you can do some like give some designs to it or make it a bigger part of a mask or yeah, there's several ways to run with that. Uh Lilet. Different direction. So for here, this again feels like kind of a, a first pass. Alright, this is the idea for the character. Okay, cool. Now let's go connect that. Let's rework the uh let's rework the pose. I think is one of the major ones. Um if he's really holding this sword up, then his hand is kind of on it feels like it's twisting the wrong way. And he's going to be pulled down to that side. So that shoulder is going to be lower. So just go get uh, a photo of somebody, get a friend, family member, just to pose there. You're not copying the person. You're just looking at the angle of the shoulders, the head, the hips. And those are the main things you're looking at. Which limb, which leg is carrying the weight? Which angle is this hip? Which angle is this? Which way is their head tilted? Left, right? Which way is it turned? Just naturally, and then make sure they're holding something heavy in that hand so you can feel that weight pulling down. Now, you're going with more of a cartoony, slim sort of character. Uh, that's fine. But I still think you could probably give him a little bit more in the in the lats and maybe just a little bit more in the hips. You can still keep him thin, though. Mahavir. Didn't get as uh, much done as they wanted to do. Uh, this armor... This armor, if this is like actual armor, this confuses me a little bit. Uh, I appreciate the idea of having like really rounded sort of big scale armor. But I don't really see it working. And then I guess this is this was going to be like a helmet. So I think this really needs a lot more work before I can do too much talk to it. Uh, because I'm just not understanding how some of these forms work. I think it's cool, the idea of having a dragonborn with, like, a dragon head that has a formed helmet to their head. I don't recall seeing that before. So that could be a really cool direction to take it, and I'd like to see you, uh, take that further. Mitch. All right, Mitch gave us more of a barbarian version. Uh, less paladin, yeah. I don't know it's hitting that note, but we've got the, he's wearied, he's basically humanoid. I guess he's uh, just dragon boy. You've got the dragon here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna suggest not bothering by trying to show like hair on the arm. I, or is this scales? Were you going for scales on this one? Uh, if so, then what you want to do is have established just a couple of big scales here and then let it fade up or change the color of it. Like, let it go dark and then the scales become uh, fewer and fewer so those dark patches get smaller and spaced out. And so they kind of just uh, fade out as they go up. And so it has not just a texture change, but it has a value change with the change, which is a lot easier to see at a distance. Uh, I got the big sword here. I think it's probably a more uh, uh, cooler way to use the the dragon shape here. Like if the you know if the head was here, and then the dragon wing came to both sides. Or if this circled back around, you know, so you had like this whole wing out here, so it made this full shape. Uh, and, you know, there's some more clever ways that you can kind of go with that. 
I got the eye patch, good. I like this series of belts is nice. It works for him for that kind of character. All right. Uh, Muckus. Set of PNG. Uh, this... I don't remember which movie. This really seems like it's inspired or based on a movie poster that I saw at some point, and I cannot remember which one it is. Uh, so I think that's where you started from on this. If not, it's it's really, really close to some movie poster. And... So, uh, yeah, I'm looking at the, some of the comments here. Yeah, I think so in the future I will. Uh, if I just focus on five or ten of them, and I can cover them in more detail, I can do some paint overs of them. I honestly think it would be ultimately more useful for people. Uh, it'd at least be more entertaining than me just doing, you know, one-minute rundowns for... Uh, two hours so uh, yeah I, I'm probably going to adjust it like when I started this I didn't know if anybody would even be interested in doing it but now that we're consistently getting you know 30 40 entries every week uh, I need to figure out a better way to handle it so that I can still get some other content in uh, like I need to do paint overs I need to do some portfolio reviews and that's only going to happen if I limit this down to maybe 30 minutes so that I have another 30 minute or hour to go into some of those things. Uh, Barely Molly says, uh, Hey, Clan, I noticed my piece wasn't in the submission folder. Mm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure you probably submitted it. I probably saved it to the wrong folder. Uh, oh, so on this, uh, good values, good lighting. You've got the dragon head back here. So I guess the light is coming from, I think this is a dragon head. I mean, that's what it looks like. The shape of it there uh he's got this that's pretty cool i say keep going with it uh i don't really see any problems with it it seems like it's just beyond the block in stage so you know a lot of this i can't really work out i'm not sure exactly you know even what textures some of this stuff is so let's keep going with it and Maybe add something else here in the woods. Just like some bushes. Something really, really barren. This is almost like bamboo. So let's see some undergrowth. Uh, change it up. This is also one you might consider doing a little foreground. Like some foreground leaves right up here next to us. Kind of put it down in the woods with us. Uh, put the camera down in the woods with him. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, maybe critique 10 and just slide show through the rest so everybody shines. Yeah, Mike, I'm with you. Uh, I want everybody to be able to see their image shown, uh, except for barely Molly, because I'm not going to save her image to this folder. And then we can talk about the top ones or just any of them that I think make good talking points, essentially. Just, hey, pay attention to this. This is cool. This is a good idea. Several of you did this, so I want you to pay attention to that. And that way I can try to cover more people that way. And then we'll just, like you say, slideshow through the rest and call out names. Uh, Franklin says, yours is not there. Mine's not there. I posted a link on the uh, streams. Um, yeah. I thought I got everybody. I went like through the list twice and I thought I got everybody. Uh, unless maybe it saved it. Okay, oh, let's see. Hang on. Arrange by uh, date added. It probably saves some of them to this folder. Or actually, you know what? I'll just go back and we'll look at those as soon as we finish with these. So, yeah. Hang on. Uh, let me switch over. Always have to be careful when I start opening tabs because I'm I can't show you all the stuff in different folders. Uh, let me go to all right. So who am I missing? 
Uh, I think you missed a few, including mine. I'm pretty sure uh, Coital submitted one. Yeah, I got uh, Coitals on the other one. And Dinsar. You know, in the future, you know what I'm going to do? I need to just set up a... Uh, I need to set up an online folder. And everybody can just upload their stuff to the folder instead of me trying to go through a hundred different YouTube comments and downloading them and making sure they get to the right place. I just need, yeah, uh, I'm going to figure out how to do that. So don't, uh, don't comment and leave a link. Instead, I'm going to set up a folder somehow online and then we'll all just upload to that same folder. And... I can download everything from that. Uh, okay, let me give me recent. Yeah, and then we'll have to follow the naming convention of the, you know, give me your name. And uh, Dennis, okay, so I'm missing yours. And Franklin, okay. Okay, this is the uh, computer. Quit jumping. Uh, let's see. That, that. Oh, I can do it this way. Uh, just give me a second. I think I have some of them, but I've got to try to move them to this other folder. Dropbox would be the quickest one. Yeah, I have a Dropbox. That's probably what I'll end up using. Uh, I've got to make it open so that everybody can post to it. Computer is not responding. Hang on. I'm just trying to move some files and they're like... <laughs> it's locking up the whole computer. Um... Well, we'll give it a moment, I guess, to see if it'll decide that it can move these files or not. It doesn't look like it is. I'm going to have to relaunch Finder. Yeah, sorry, Finder locked up. I it, That's unusual. It hasn't done that since I updated the... Uh, OS. All right, let's try this again, computer. It's not a real big thing. I mean, this, they're just JPEG images. All right, I want all of those. Ugh. <laughs> this thing is so laggy. It's like trying to load way more than what I'm asking it to do. Uh, yeah, we've tried the Facebook group thread thing. It's not as easy. Uh, yeah, just people always have questions about it, and it's just harder to use, and I end up having to spend hours answering questions. Okay, computer, I need you to move those to there. Mm. Alright guys, I don't know what the deal is. I try to move these files and it just locks the uh, the the finder window up. It does not like the idea of me doing that. Okay. Well, that's what you get when you run OBS. It sort of just hijacks the operating power of the computer. And uh, by the way, why you are not live on Twitch? Uh, that's because I've been working. <laughs> uh, 
That's because I've got like actual commissions and Twitch is when I have time away from actual commissions. So I've been working on Patreon. Uh, well, I have like swatches, live stream and videos and messaging and Vibrance live stream and preparing for that and uh, three commissions and Facebook groups and my Facebook page, and my other Facebook page, and the Swatches page, and the Vibrance page, and the and the Patreon page, and Patreon messages, and then my regular art station gallery, my Deviant Art gallery, and the actual events that I'm going to. Yeah. So <laughs> right now Twitch is sort of down here. <laughs> Uh, okay, which one have I not covered? Maybe I can just pull them. Uh, not look at those, those. Um, I've looked at that and that. I think we just haven't got to these yet. Hmm. All right, so I guess I must have missed some of them i swore i went through every one of them i remember seeing your name so i thought i got everything saved hmm. yeah my apologies is there anything we can do to help you out well no i mean i thought i saved the files but sometimes it just doesn't work like i i go through the list like earlier today i went through the list i just went comment by comment and saved every single one of them but i don't know where it puts some of them or why some don't show up beats me uh no i'm sorry troy i, I mean, yeah it's just it's not a system i i need a better system we need like that everybody uploads something to a folder system like I said, it's not something I thought about to begin with, so I didn't come up with a, a good system. We've just been doing this. Because initially I got, you know, eight people send in stuff. Well, fine. I mean, that's not too hard. But when you're getting, you know, 40 entries, and then people are updating entries or deleting their comments and re, you know, putting comments back up um, or trying to comment and post them in other places, then you start losing them. Yeah. Well, uh, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm trying to keep from getting burned out, which is why I'm trying to not take as many commissions anymore. I'm, I'm really trying to make a living off of just swatches and patreon and uh, it's honestly it's not there yet and until i can i'm not going to be able to put the time into the stuff that i really need to so it's sort of a catch-22 I, I can't really put in the time that i need until i start making the same amount of money as i could through commissions but i can't do that until i have the time um, yeah, so I'm just kind of stuck in that place right now. Yeah. Uh, do you do comments on 3D works? This is my design, and I'm trying to figure out how to change it up. Uh, I will give you comments as far as just design itself. Uh, I don't know anything about 3D programs, so I'm not going to tell you how to go in there and check, you know, your settings and adjust things. But I could tell you, okay, that shape looks wrong, or anatomically that looks off. Um, you know, I can do that sort of thing. So, all right. Uh, going down. Whoa, that was not the right folder. Okay. Let's go. Mm. We're down here. PM perfect. Okay, so we've got a Dragonborn. And sitting there. All right, if we were going for... I'll say, depending what your mood is, if you're going for a slightly happy, like there's hope, then it works. Otherwise, when you desaturate the colors and make them a little more, uh, 
uh, a little more muted. And the paladin feeling isn't quite coming through. So, you know, make sure you look up some paladin images and see kind of what gives that feeling. They're like, holy, uh, am I not putting this one right? They're like holy knights is sort of what a paladin is. And so having that sort of imagery or shapes uh, can help pull that across. The pose is good, though. This is one of the best poses. It feels very natural. Uh, I'll check you out on Patreon and show some love. Well, thank you. Yeah, I've got a uh, Patreon is at uh, patreon.com slash swatches. The next one will probably be coming out the last week here of February, uh, the next reward cycle. Renato. This is a full well-rendered scene. Uh, I've got the whole thing going on here. That's, that's cool. Uh, the fire, I don't know that we really need the fire right here. Um, it, and it's very dull. We need a lot more pop of color off of that. And if you're going to put it here, make sure that we're having a lot of that warmth showing up elsewhere. This needs to be something that's shining on other stuff. And we get that, that orange light. Otherwise, let's just keep with this light coming down and get rid of the fire. In which case, we probably want to move the uh, picture up a little bit. So we have a little more headroom. He's looking this way. The light's coming from this way. And there's really not anything important down here. So let's do that. Uh, no hurt feelings. Appreciate that you've given us so much. Um, yeah, uh, going forwards, I'm, I might be taking off uh, a week or two coming up. And that way I can get some stuff taken care of. Like when I get back to my mood ebook, which I'm still I'm writing down notes. I'm still outlining stuff going forwards. Uh, I will likely take off several weeks in order to do that. I It will be one of the best things that I've done. It will be one of the most useful things that I have made. Uh, but it's going to take a lot of work to do. So I might take off and do that. Uh, Jonas, uh, sorry again. Okay, well, I don't take uh, reviews just on request Jonas uh, if you want to send your portfolio in for consideration you can do that but those are chosen at random all right so about this character um, this is another one where like the neck is very thin compared to the head you may consider shortening the face a little bit I'm bringing slightly more of the human features back into it uh, so it's not just dino uh, no say dinosaur dragon head on basically a human body. So let's find slightly something in there a little bit different or change the, the shoulders here, like I said, like the neck coming down. It's probably really good for that. Uh, you could even consider giving him more of the animal leg where it goes backwards, you know, from the, the knee part down. Yep. Ricardo. Uh, you said, I think you're spending too thin everywhere. I agree, you need to make an online folder. Yeah, right now I'm spread thin. I'm not going to argue that I am. I've got a lot going on. And sometimes you've got to do that. Uh, you know, the vibrance means a lot to me. And what I'm doing out there means a lot. And doing this sort of thing means a lot. Uh, I just need, honestly, once I get my commissions, I've got these other two commissions to finish up. I'll finish those up, and it's going to free up a lot of time. And I'm going to be able to devote those into doing the Twitch stream and doing some um, personal images that I'll be able to use over on Patreon. And that hopefully will help build Patreon up enough that I'm not going to have to be supplementing it with commissions so we'll see uh oh yeah i just opened that i didn't even say anything all right i like the character design uh, breakdown here we got a basic pose kind of figuring out what pose they like and then did some silhouette studies uh several of these are actually pretty nice i could see you moving forwards with these 
Pencil sketch, cleaner lines. Okay, um, I, I'm sure you know what you like. I like the shield shape. It's a little different, a little unusual. I'm going to challenge you to go ahead and get some human reference for this, like proportionally. I know that you can play with proportions, but this pose doesn't really work. Like the hips are way over here, but the shoulders don't really mimic that as much. Uh, the arm pose is kind of odd. This is likely going to be straighter or at an angle. Uh, she has it completely flat to us. And it's not likely going to be. She's going to have it slightly forwards, right? So this needs to be coming this way with that kind of coming forwards to us. Uh, we also need to check out the proportion of like the head and the neck to the body. So, assumably, her shoulder is underneath this fabric, underneath there, in which case, her shoulder is, like, down here. She's got a pretty long neck. Yeah, so make sure that we have the human form under there. I feel like it's getting lost a little bit. And get some good references. Okay. Richard. D&D, uh, &D, Dragonborn, Paladin, Concept, Line Art, and Basic Colors and Lighting. Yeah, it does seem like you're a Dragonborn D&D &D character. So, this is pretty straightforward. Um, okay, uh, something to think about the shapes here. We're using completely different shape designs and uh, design methodology. So, you've got lots of curves. Curves, curves, curves. S curves, S curves, and then you completely counter that with rectangle and diamond. And so now we've got spikes. We've got acute spikes and rectangles and curves and and diamonds. And so let let's limit that. Like these need to become angular or these need to become curved, and that needs to become curved. So pick a, a family of them and go with that family, and, and don't branch out, you know, too, too far to, like, every every shape possible. Uh, that would give it a little more continuity. Otherwise, pretty good. Um, yeah, check the head here. Like, if you bump that eye up a little bit so that eye arch uh, breaks that shape, the the perfect curve there uh i think that would be a little more successful okay sam sam has a dragon born paladin like martial arts style that's cool i wouldn't have thought of that myself i like that idea and summoner of some kind uh this is neat i like this the golden dragon thing, like, curling around her. Uh, that's cool. I think that is probably the idea that you want to run with, the whole thing. And using that as a uh, jewelry is neat. A little um, splash of color there in the hair. So let's do a couple of things. Let's say this is a great place to run from. And you could have that same thing here. But maybe it's silver, and it goes up, and it wraps around, and then it wraps around her head. And maybe it's wing makes some sort of design off of her ear. Um, maybe there's another one going around her leg or something. And we need to pick a color scheme, because we have blue and red and gold and cyan. So let's pick, like, one family of colors, and then if you want to have an accent color, you can. But... I'm pretty much working with the primaries right now of yellow, blue, and red. Sardi, 96. Another Asian style. Um, nice clean design here. A simple but effective show of dragonborn. Slightly not human. Some, some variation. And just the horns, the little scaling effect. Uh, this is... Uh, similar to what I was saying earlier, you can show that scaling effect like big ones to little ones, but we need to see a value change so that they are different than the value of the skin so they show up. Uh, reminds me of Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah, it has some of that flavor, doesn't it? The Like the Fire Kingdom, the sort of armor style. Yeah. 
and the blue flames. Okay. I think probably her hair needs to be that same cyan color. Because her hair... Her hair doesn't really fit anything else. And that doesn't fit anything else. So let's make this and this the same. So either this is cyan and that's cyan. Or this is purple and that's purple. Um, I think it'll be a little more consistent. Um, the rest of this works well. You get still have the, the feminine... Um, shape overall the wide hips thin waist that sells um i think you could do something more with this i don't even know if you need this cloak but if you're going to keep the cloak that uh let's find a better series of of curves and in order to create that that wrap effect and we only see this part of it unless that's part of it maybe blowing maybe blowing off to the side a little bit Make it have some sort of movement in the image. Okay, Scarecrow. Uh, Clint, if it's possible for you to download this link for my entry. Da -da -da, this is Coitle's last one. Uh, I've got Coitle's. I'll have to go back and look at it. It's in the other folder. Okay, so uh, let me go over here. Hang on. Uh, FinalDeviantArt.com Swatches Challenge There, okay, let me try to open that in a new tab Without the space, obviously Okay, let's take that out huh. It works so much better that way Yeah, once I clear some stuff off of my uh, my schedule, or I have fewer things on my schedule, uh, fewer ongoing projects, then I can hang out more on Discord. That's one of the things that I have not been able to do lately because um, I just I have been concentrating all day on whatever that task is, and I can't really think about typing and, and, and talking. Okay, give me uh, live stream twenty. Okay, and that was final fourteen. Okay, go to watches. Now, this one... Okay, computer, come over here. Grab these, put these here. Yeah, okay. I appreciate you guys uh, sticking with me through that. Uh, yeah. No matter how many times you think you get it right, you know, it seems like I keep missing them. Okay, so let's minimize that. Uh, we'll finish up through this part, and then we'll uh, switch over to the other folder. Pull that up. Give me this, and I need OBS back. Okay. Dragonborn entries. Yeah, Scarecrow. All right. So we're looking at Scarecrow's piece. Um, powerful, big guy, armor. Now, double check this leg. Um, having the animal leg is good, but unless you get it really accurate, it's going to look kind of funky. Uh, this is also a good place to have that red cape. Don't let it hug up right next to him. That's, a, that's, a, that's like a wimpy way to use a cape. Let's have that thing blowing off, man. Going off behind him. This is... Look at the way that they illustrate Superman's cape. 
as it blows behind him. And you can get a lot of feeling and epicness off of that. Uh, let's just utilize that better. Um, you know, if you're... I'm not sure exactly what you're going for as textures. Like, if you go that with hair, that almost looks like it's hair. If that's hair, then that would be different. Uh, it's not something you see very much. And you could give him, like, long hair that sort of turns into some, like, spikes and, and horn things. That would be cool. Yeah. I like the limited color. Keep working on it. It's, it's rough, but I think it's working. Aaron, you just arrived. Well, welcome. How's it going? Sergio. All right, Sergio. Brazen Knight. All right, so we got a... Uh, this guy's almost like a you know, magic user, demigod, dragonborn. So he's only one, I don't say only one, one of the few that have uh, powers. Okay, now if you're going to do this, then, I, you know, I can go, I can go with most of it. I, I think it's another one of those not quite utilized as much as it could be. If we're going to have flaming hands, then let those flames affect more. right? Because it hardly affects anything else on the character. So if you were to take it... Okay, take away all the light. Take away all the light of the scene, except for those. And you can have that glow behind him. Sure, whatever. He's got a magic glow. He's Goku, right? And how much more would that... Uh, would that have as far as drama, right? So, oh. Okay, did I not? Okay, I did, okay. It's just my computer is not keeping up the screen over there, right? So I was thinking that I'd not switch screens because of that. All right, but I did. Okay, cool. Uh, preview. All right, so if you were to take away all the light except for that, now you've got this really cool red underglow highlighting his sharp features and the points of his armor. And then you add this blue glow here. And that mainly affects the bottom half of his body while his top half is mainly underlit by this. And so you now have got this blue glow and red glow sort of intermingling on this character. But either way, it makes him look uh, more menacing. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, and you can keep it this way, we know artistic style, that's fine, then we really need to punch this up. Look at flames. Look how they work. Look at the way the color shifts from one color to the other color. Look at how bright it gets and how to show that brightness. Uh, usually what you want to do is almost use straight white, and then the edges of it gets hot. Um, right now we're adding white over essentially orange or yellow or red and it's cooling it down and it's uh, not working as well. Okay, let's find let's find a way to use this black instead of just being a big shape like this to mimic the uh, fins, the ridges and the fins and let it follow that. And so we have a mimic of shape there. So a couple of ideas on that. No, uh, a couple more left. Steven. Steven said that he almost gave up on this one. Hey, been there. We all have those from time to time. But you submitted something. You made some work. So I appreciate that. All right, he's got this big guy. Yeah, I think this one got away from you. I think the idea was there. Unfortunately, like, I, almost, I almost feel like this is stronger than... Than this is. Um, yeah, I think you got into doing the details on the face and this expression and having these little spikes on this. And I, I think you got into some of this noodly stuff before you needed to. Uh, if you had kept it looser, kept it like this, and just worked in big tones, um, don't worry about this texture stuff. All right, don't worry about getting the grime on the sword and the wrinkles and getting individual teeth and getting the leather. All right, 
that's not where the picture is having problems. Um, this is super flat to us. Um, and this is mimicking that same pattern, which just makes it look like this is a big flat shape back here. Um, so we need to find a pose that is more three-dimensional, that has maybe the upper body turned slightly one way, the lower body turned the other way. And yeah, uh, like um, 1015 says, the silhouette doesn't really work. So if you just look at this as a silhouette, I don't really know what's going on. Whereas I look at this as a silhouette, I know exactly what's going on. I look at that. I can probably make that out pretty well too. But this, it just doesn't. So we need to find a better silhouette. Uh, even taking away the cape might help, or at least blow the cape off to one side. Uh, so yeah, I think that one just kind of got away from you. You can do it, Stephen, though. I've seen you've got some good work. Um, this just wasn't your week. Uh, Troy did say that they had limited time. And they weren't able, they weren't going to be able to do a full character, so they just decided to do a portrait. Hey, good idea. Uh, I've told you that before, guys. If you cannot do the full thing really well, just do part of it well. No, no need to mess around with doing a lot of mediocrity. Just do something nice, and this is nice. They had like four hours, so they just spent it on a decent little portrait, and there are some good points here. Uh, just showing a bit of the uh, scale effect kind of going on there. little scarring down there by the mouth. And just some striking white hair. You know, nothing real fancy going on here. It just works. I mean, I'd buy this as a D&D character. No, that's fine. Uh, the ear is setting a bit high here. So we need to move that ear back over here a little bit. Shift it a little lower. And if you want to give her some sort of slightly animalistic ears, I think that would also fit the character. Um, let's also adjust the neck. This is like super tight on her neck. So anything on the neck, you need to remember that if this was real, she has to be able to turn her neck. She has to be able to go up and down, side to side a little bit. So let's give that a little opening. Or you make it like cloth or chain mail. Which allows us to know that it can bend with her, right? Okay. Uh, William Wu. A good piece. Uh, cl clean work over uh, some lines. Uh, this is probably the best shape of horn that we've seen submitted for this challenge. And I like the color scheme. The navy blue with just sort of the beige color. That's a really good handling. Uh, these designs work. I particularly like this. The way this goes up from over the shoulders, down along these two circles. And you've got that shape mimicked down. Um, wow, overall, I think this is a very successful character. Uh, I don't have a lot to say here. I think even if you just drew that one in at half opacity, uh, it would be nice. Otherwise, it does seem kind of odd that I can't see the other horn back there. Or he's one-horned, maybe. Fine. Uh, the sword, of course, needs some work. Um, it, it's not nearly as interesting as he is. Um, if you use reuse some of these shapes... Now, this shape is kind of cool. Fine, use that shape. Let that be part of the pommel. Or you like this shape. All right, use, reuse that shape. And that's where you can have more consistency. Uh, let, you know, the big blade here and then get smaller. Or a bigger blade on the end get smaller. Just give me some more um, cooler shapes going on there. Um, no, uh, not too much else. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Really well done. Uh, is mine done? I just got from work today. I missed half the stream. Yeah, we already covered Jurors Fransel. Um, Mitch says, uh, Clint, thank you for your comp uh, compiling the Sweet 16 lighting information. It really helps out. Well, thank you. Uh, the Sweet 16 has a whole thing on how to light characters. And it's 16 go-to lighting arrangements. You can pick it up at the, the website, swatchesart.com. All right, a couple of others that were over here so Dinsar uh, but we've not we're gonna go uh, 
we're going to go and uh, look at some other... Some other images that were saved in a different folder. So, here we have Dinsars and... Aaron, I'm pretty sure you got in. So we had uh, Dragonborn. Aaron Howard, yeah, you were the first one alphabetically. So you're right here. And, okay, this has several really cool things and several odd things. So first thing I really like is the idea that the eye patch is actually part of the helmet. And that's pretty cool. Um, I guess you're combining this. Like, this looks like very normal. And then you've got a dragonborn. Um, the really, really blue skin is probably a little too much. So we want to pull that down and adjust that color. Uh, okay, yeah. All right, this, basically what I'm seeing is, this is very traditional. Like, standard armor, fine, okay. Uh, then it just feels like those several little bits that have been added on to it. And I think we need to find a medium that bridges in between those. Because this shape language and this shape language are, like, really vastly apart from each other. And if we were to go in here and start adding these instead of just being perfect curves so that these have more of the fiery, wavy shape, then that would, I think, bridge between them better. Uh, this is also an odd way to stop that shape. Um, if you wanted to have this basically just being a breastplate, uh, then that is basically the shirt tabard thing that goes in under the breastplate. I think that would make sense. It would not be unlike uh, Wonder Woman, right? The way that her breastplate goes across there like that. Uh, then you could have this tabard underneath it. Uh, otherwise, the tabard really just it needs to be like a regular cap tabard and it like goes all the way down further towards the knees. Yep. Okay, over here. Uh, final 14. A beautiful image. Uh, a very nice image. So, we've got... 1202. Oh, yeah, because you put the month there. Good color schemes, good shape language. I, the, on the whole, the character just works. Um, I don't, I feel like maybe it's less paladin uh, than shaman. Uh, Barely says, uh, do you remember seeing mine or did it not make it in? I must have just missed it, Molly. I don't... I do not recall. Um, so, uh, yeah, I uh, sorry. You know what, uh, Molly, if you want to just put it up on the Swatches Facebook group and I'll leave you some comments on it. You know, my apologies. I'll leave you some comments out there on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, this one is beautiful. Uh, it's... Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that's working for it, for those who, you know, want to learn. So it's got some good shape language, and it's consistent. You know, they come up with this sort of dark scale pattern. Okay, cool. Uh, then they reuse it, and they reuse it, and they reuse it, and they reuse it, and they reuse it. Good. They have these sort of golden scales. Used it multiple times. Do they use a lot of spiky stuff? No, just up on the head. What else do they use everywhere else? The same shapes, the same angles, the same sort of uh, value ranges. So they, they picked a couple of families of shapes and colors, and everything is running with that. It's also not a complicated pose. They're doing a lot of the talking with just like one little hand thing going here. Um, this one does feel odd. I would suggest a change with the hair. Because essentially the hair looks like it is hovering along the outside of that arm and shoulder. So that's like, yeah. Um, I was thinking Warlock or some kind of dark cleric. Oh, okay. Yeah, this does have interesting colors. So I think that's well done. Uh, some of that, just a little change there. Uh, 
Um, I don't have too much to say. It's well rendered. Uh, I, you might even go with a little more of the shoulder being seen. Um, I like the idea of slightly bare shoulders on that. And, you know, whether you, you cut some off of the mantelpiece or whether you just lowered that a little bit, I think that would even help some. Just a little more skin on the shoulder. Because it's sort of unusual. It's like, you know. Uh, coital. Uh, let go. Uh, Koto always doing some nice images. Uh, very controlled lighting scheme, value scheme, color scheme. Um, okay. Uh, we got the dragon back here. Uh, I guess he's fighting on behalf of the dragons, is my impression. So, he, because he's just taking out the night guy. Uh, is it weird living in a state with two time zones? Uh... It can be, I mean, especially if you're straddling line, but uh, the other time zones, not until you get like all the way over to Chattanooga. So I would have to drive five hours in order to get to a different time zone. Or I'd have to drive like 12 hours the other direction. Uh, okay, so what do I like? Um, it's a good pose, believable pose. Like I said, good value scheme, color scheme. Keeps everything limited except for the colors that he wants to pop. And some adjustments. Uh, this is off to me. Like, the knee center is on the right, right here. Well, if you look down here, it should be more on the left. So it feels like that is twisted over just a little bit. And that needs to be pulled back. Um... You also might think about making these this shoulder uh sh <laughs> in the shoulder and the elbow golly uh making the elbow piece a little bigger those are actually usually fairly large to allow enough of the room so you might increase that a bit and a little light on that back hand uh because i'm totally losing that back arm if we could do something just to bring that back arm out a little bit i think that would be better uh is this the same guy who did the mortar tower last week yes it is yep and i like the inclusion of the dragon back there i think that's nice so okay so i'm going to grab these guys and go ahead and toss them in with the rest of them there we go what are we doing and so we're the top ones yeah i've got to wrap this up it's always been two hours already um We'll start with honorable mentions, and out of the honorable mentions, I will pick a winner. Um, final 14, you are going to be in the finalist. And we'll pick uh, Francel, your finalist. Uh, Swatches, I would like to see Coital work live. His brush seemed uh, so hard, but it works. Yeah, well, maybe contact him. I don't know. Maybe he has the uh, Twitch. And uh, Igor. Um, yeah, you didn't go with like the full character, but I cannot say that that is not a nice scene. So let's talk this that in there. Quiddle, um, always nice. Uh, Kat, Kat, you did have a particularly nice image this week, so let's toss that in there, too. And I think William also uh, rounded out a really nice design. So these will be your finalists this week. Now let's see who we're going to pull out. Uh, try to get everybody situated here okay. Oh, yeah, your screen probably... I don't know, are you getting everything on there? Pretty close, hopefully. Okay. Okay, per the criteria... 
Okay, I'm gonna say, okay, let's start with this. These are all executed well. So they're basically even on execution. And so nobody has a real upper hand as far as execution wise. That's what I'm thinking about. Uh, number two, they're all very clean. That's part of execution. So I'll count that in there too. Not a lot of heads up. Um, the next thing is, do they fulfill all the criteria? Uh, Dragonborn. I get Dragonborn from all of them. You know, keeping it broad enough. Uh, then the next is... See, the issue with the Paladin. It's like, that doesn't read Paladin to me. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I really personally like that image, but it doesn't read Paladin. Um, I don't know that one does either. That's more Shaman to me. My face is over the sixth one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, it does impose my face over there. Uh, let me scoot these over. I'll push this over here. I can put that up there. There. Yeah, it's cats. There we go. Uh, several, uh, William, you got several people voting for you. Gosh, guys, you know what? I didn't... Uh, this is, like, difficult. This is genuinely difficult because these are some really nice pieces. Um, uh, okay. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Francel. Uh, it's, gosh, it is super tight. Um, I think these so, okay first i think this does paladin i think it does uh fulfill all the stuff only it's only half the character and when other people have done the same quality but they give me the full character i've got to cancel it out i've got to x this this is one of my favorite pieces of this week personally i love this character i would be happy if i designed this character i think it's a really cool character um, I think this one is a, a great character to start a series of characters with, to build something around. Um, doesn't really hit Paladin, so I've got to pull that. Um, same thing with that one, not quite Paladin. Leaves me with these guys. Um, this, I think, is a little more original than that. And then this, I think, is rendered really well. And they give me the multiple versions, and I get the dragon effect added in. And that's something that we didn't really get on this. We don't have the dragon design motif in the character. Um, so those two, I think, fulfilled it the best. Um, and this one, I just think it was handled... Uh, let's, let's pull them up a little bit better. If this one was just finished out a little bit more... Like, we've got more uh, thicknesses of stuff going on here. We've got a little more delicate lighting going on. We've got the options of with and without armor, uh, with and out. But as far as design-wise, I think that is one of the best that we've had sent in. Uh, it's a difficult challenge and is handled really well. But, Francel, so you're the winner. You get $25 from Cube Brush. Uh, what I'll need you to do is send me a private message or email or something and let me know your email because I will get you in contact with the lady over on Cube Brush and she will get you set up with your coupon. And you get to do that. So now we need to do... Well, it's like I said. Um, it's not always complete originality. Uh, it doesn't have to be complete originality. It's also other things. You have to balance it out. And... Let me tell you this, guys. It sucks to judge art. Okay? 
It's not. I don't judge this because it's fun. In fact, of all the stuff that I do, it's one of the things I kind of wish I didn't have to do. I like looking at art. I love talking about it. I do not particularly like having to pick winners. Because <laughs> um, everybody likes different things. And art competitions, I've done some before too. And it really just depends on that person. And it depends on what that person likes. And it depends on what day it is. And it depends on uh, a lot of things. Ultimately, there is one thing that I've learned. And I've told this to other people before too. And I'm sure you guys are going to do more competitions. You're going to move on from this little weekly challenge. And you're going to do bigger and you know better competitions. And what you need to know is when you get to that top 5%, top 1%, depending on how big the uh, challenge is, it's anybody's game. Literally. When you get to that top 5 to 1%, anybody rightfully could win it from that group. And it totally just is up for grabs at that point. If you can get to be a finalist of basically any competition, that's the goal. So, you know, that's just a little side advice going in. Yeah. You could pick the finalists and uh, let chat vote via poll. I could. Um, yeah, we can try some variations like that going forwards. Uh, yeah, I maybe if I take it down to the final three, uh, then everybody could vote. I would be okay with that. I don't want to give, like, you vote from the entire pool. I don't think that's necessarily okay. Uh but then that also gets into the issue of, well, who brings the most friends to chat? Because if you can bring 10 friends in to vote for you, then, you know, you guarantee to win. Uh, okay, so I'll have to think about that. Now, let's pull this over to Photoshop. Maybe. Maybe. Come on. Here we go. All right, so we're going to do another character, but it's only going to be a portrait. All right, this is not going to be a full character. This is the portrait shot. We're talking about this. Head and shoulders, maximum. Gilherm, uh, hey, bro, big fan from Brazil. Hey, good to have some love from Brazil. Multiply, okay. So, another character, portrait version. And I'm going to get my dice. All right, so we do uh, first column, second column. Let's see. We'll do second column. Uh, we're not going to do the same thing again. So if I get the same thing again, we'll uh, re-roll. 15. All right, it will be a medic. Is the class. Oh, yeah, first, second column. First column. This is a muscular medic. Right. So uh, we obviously won't see too much muscle. Uh, maybe he just has like a thick neck and some big shoulders. Uh, what is his species? 1 to 20. Let's take a look. He's a demon medic. <laughs> All right. Uh, genre. Uh, I'll roll. If it doesn't fit well, I won't worry about it. Hmm. No, I don't know that we need genre uh, motif. Maybe there's a motif. Now let's at least find gender. Let's find the gender. Oh, well, that's not going to work. Uh, let's see. One, two, three. Okay. That would be female. Okay. So, a muscular medic who is a demon. And time-wise. Yeah, let's set a time on it. Uh, is this like old times or is this futuristic? 1 to 10. Let's use this dice. <clears throat> Prehistoric. Okay. Now, with the demon, I'm fairly open. I mean, you could go 
full demonic like gargoyle ugly or if you want to go with demon like I've done a, a demon character who was basically you know a, a pretty girl with horns and black eyes so you could be pretty broad on that um, I don't know that you're going to be able to sell the idea of medic very much so it's mainly the demon uh, oh, muscular female. Okay, well, <laughs> see how you do that. Prehistoric. Yeah, so we're talking about leathers and uh, simple woven fabrics. Maybe they have uh, some jewelry of like bones and stuff. Yeah. Tribal punk. Yeah. So if it is a demon, maybe their their musculature could make her pretty big. Unless you want a different one. You want to re-roll muscular, since it doesn't really go with female. We can do something else. I think maybe something else would actually work better. Alright. Well, that wouldn't even apply, because we're doing a face shot. <laughs> I'm trying to find something that would actually affect a portrait. Uh, that wouldn't affect a portrait. Okay, we got uh, animal horns or claws. Yeah, I don't know that we go with muscular. This could be a good one. Yeah. So, uh, medic, prehistoric, horns or claws and a female so that is the outline for next time and i don't know of any reason why we should not have a stream next week so i'm gonna say there'll be a stream next week probably the same 7 p.m uh so which doctor shamanistic herb type which is character i mean prehistoric actually makes it hard um so which doctor shaman yeah, like a witch doctor, shaman, herb type. Yeah, that's anything like that's fine. And I, I'm not expecting a lot from medic. I mean, if you just kind of keep medic in the back of your mind, then that might help. Just, you know, they have like a satchel with a little, some herbs in the back of it. Uh, basically, it keeps the character from being an, in armor and looking like all this other stuff they're going to basically look fairly normal that's fine i'm not talking about a lot uh some of this is for you just to have ideas of a direction to take yeah where do you send it in uh, i will create a dropbox folder and put a link to it in the facebook group uh, then we can use that but i'll set that up after the stream and come up with a link and, and give you guys that uh, i'll try to get that to you sometime tomorrow and then you can upload it during the week before next week there's a way that we can download this sheet so that we can do exercises on our own yeah i've made it bef open before um i'll upload it to the uh the facebook group let me put that on the list so i don't forget mm. character sheet uh yeah it is in my ebook too so if you picked up my ebook on characters uh designing and drawing then it's in the back of that and there's several other um exercises as well facebook group okay uh is this portrait set or can we stretch that out a bit i want this be focused on the face i want to see face rendering um it is more about that than uh, how can we buy or get the ebook oh uh, you want to go to the store if that will let me type swatchesart.com yep yeah look for the ebook uh it's, it's a pdf so, yeah, you should be able to open it on, like, anything. <laughs>
and it's part one. I will eventually add more. I'll do a part two. There's a lot of other things that I haven't covered, like posture and some other anatomy, but yeah. So. Yeah, uh, it's something that I see is some of you are really good at getting the ideas like designing a character, but you haven't put the time into rendering faces. So, even if you keep it fairly human, then let's see a good face. Or if you want to go like full demon, you know, look at some um, animals. You know, maybe you want to go like with a bat. Maybe you're inspired by some of the shapes of a bat. Or maybe you're inspired by, you know, alligators or something, you know, some sort of reptile. That's fine too. You go that direction. But make sure you got some good references. Build off some um, natural forms. Uh, if you have not been joining the Vibrant Streams, we have a Vibrant Stream this Wednesday, uh, two days. And we're going to be talking about what you talk about. That is going to be the topic. It's about the what you talk about is a really big distinguisher about where your mind is at and where your heart's at and where you'll eventually go in life. So that's going to be the topic. It's a it's a good one. Yeah. Uh, general question to everyone: uh, How much time do you sit the week? Spare? Okay, you're talking to those guys. Uh, do you have any color tutorial? I've never drawn this kind of art before. Mostly comic. Uh, yes, I have a YouTube video here on the channel on art fundamentals, color theory. Uh, a lot of people have issue with it because they have other opinions. It's good information. All right. <laughs> So go look at that and also look up videos and hopefully I'm spelling his name right. Uh, hopefully the computer is responding to me. All right, it doesn't. All right, the chat froze it again to me. So hang on. Hmm. Come on chat, let me type here. All right, I think I'm spelling this right. Uh, Marco Bushi, he's an artist. Uh, take a look at his YouTube channel. And he's got some pretty excellent videos on colors. So check those. Uh, is there a way... Uh, there will be a new up place for upload images this week. Or we go as previous. No, I'll come up with a new one this week. We'll change it up. Uh, going forwards, I'll start setting up like a Dropbox or somewhere else. I'll figure out something. And I'll try to have that up to you some point tomorrow. Uh, if not, we'll certainly have it done by, you know, the weekend so that you can upload then. Yeah, okay, that did spell it right then. Yeah, Barco Bushi. Yeah, I've watched several of his videos just over lunch over the last couple of days. And we, you know, write on the same page as far as what we think about colors and how to approach them. But sometimes just the way somebody presents it the way they explain it, the examples that they show, it makes it click. Where I can try to say it, and I can give my guides, and it sort of makes sense. And maybe you watch his, and you're like, oh, light bulb, totally makes sense now. So it really does depend on who's teaching the topic. No. Uh, if I'm late for the Paladin, where can I upload? Oh, you're late, dude. It's already over. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, guys, I've got to wrap it up here, because I need to drive down to the gym and work out for the next 45 minutes but uh, it was good hanging out with you if you want to support this channel then please go over to patreon.com slash swatches pledge out there you get psd files jpeg files of my work you get some uh bite-sized video about 10 minutes long they have uh, commentary over the time lapse of me painting different images I'm going to be working on my Oberon project as soon as I get finished with these commissions. And uh, yeah, you know, any support out there basically goes right back into all of this because it allows me to not have to spend time on commissions. So thank you so much. And I will catch you guys next week. All right. So until you say next time, keep drawing.